so welcome to this April meeting of the Housing Partnership. I see we have a couple of people here who are logging on as guests. So I think we need to go around and do introductions. I'll start. I'm Carmen Juno. I'm the chair of this committee. And I have been on the Housing Partnership for about um, three years, three years now. I formerly worked with homeless vets and I'm a homeowner in Florence. Um, Jen. Good evening, Jen Derringer. I work at Community Legal Aid and this is my second go, go around to be on the partnership. I think this time I'm going on about a year or so. Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah Howard. Um, been on the partnership, I don't know little over a year, year and a half, I forget. <laughs> um, and I am a former person living in public housing for many years. And um, yeah, hi. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Ace? Hi, Ace Taylor, they, them. I have been on the partnership for more than a year, but less than two years. Uh, I am a homeowner and landlord in Northampton. Thank you, Ace. Richard? Yes, uh, my name is Richard Abusa. I am a longtime partnership member, and I also serve on the Northampton Redevelopment Authority. I'm a local property manager, and I live in Florence. Gordon? Hi, I'm Gordon. I am an attorney, at also a community legal aid, um, and I'm a longtime member. I think I'm approaching 10 years now on the committee. I am a homeowner. I live in Leeds. And Keith. Uh, Keith Noy, I'm the community development planner with the city. I'm on staff here, so I'll be taking notes and uh, uh, give an update on some city uh, things later. Okay, so I want to turn to our guests and I'd like, Julio. Um, oh, Julio, sorry, you. That's all right. Sorry. I'm, I'm Julio sorry. Alves. I live in Northampton and I've been on the partnership for four years. Thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to turn to our guests. Could you please introduce yourself and give us um, a sense of why you are tuning in tonight? I'll start with you, Bev. My name is Beverly Bates. Um, I am here tonight because I expressed my interest in somehow becoming involved in uh, the housing world issue in uh, Northampton. Um, I understand that my uh, appointment is going through whatever process they go through uh, with the city council. Um, and I was encouraged uh, by Keith and others to um, sit in tonight say hello to you all and start to get my head around what it is that you do. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, I was born and raised in, in Western Mass um, and I lived in Williamsburg for many years. Uh, I then started uh, traveling uh, for work. I uh, lived in Boston for many years and I am very recently retired. Uh, so I decided the best thing to do would be to come home and uh, my wife and I bought a house in Florence last summer. Uh, now that I finished grumping at the contractor, I've decided to see if I can be of value somewhere, uh, which led to this process. In terms of my, my work life, um, I've worked in affordable housing my entire uh, work life, which ended up being about 40 some odd years. Um, I started out working for community-based nonprofits in Springfield and Holyoke. Um, I uh, spent 35 of those years working for the Community Builders, um, which is a fairly large um, regional nonprofit. By regional, I mean working in 16 states and uh, any number of cities. Um, if you have any knowledge of Community Builders, it might be because they have been the developer of the affordable housing at the villages, <laughs> excuse me, at Hospital Hill. Mm -hmm. And I actually had the, the pleasure to work on that project. Um, <laughs> must be 20 years ago now when, uh, when things were first getting started. Um, I won't say more than that, except to say that my whole life has been about this and I feel very passionately about the issue. I think I've acquired a, a few ideas and skills along the way. 
Um, when I left the community builders, I was the head of the real estate development group, the group that plans and finances and executes um, development work. Um, it was a team of about 65 people and again working pretty much throughout the eastern part of the United States. So I've seen a lot of different kinds of things, uh, but in any event, I'm very, very pleased at the possibility of working with you all and uh, having s some time to spend back, as I said, home. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Happy to. Um, Adam, I'm going to turn to you. Can you introduce yourself, please? Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Adam Marks. Uh, I own a two family in Florence, and I'm just interested in affordable housing and what the partnership is up to. Thanks, Adam. Um, I'm having trouble seeing some of the fine print. Um, Gwen Nabod, am I getting that approximately right? Yes, hello. My name is Gwen Evan Nabod, and I understand that my application is also going through the process. Um, I've been a single mom for 33 years, and I've been, you know, uh, a market rate renter since 1980 something. And, you know, I've gone through a lot in housing. And so I've had a lot of experience with, um, I guess, uh, tenant, tenant, tenant issues, tenant landlord issues, um, you know, working through that, you know, moving through the system, um, I'm, I'm now in the system, but before this, I was not because I'm a gardener and I, I'm also, I do a lot of climate action work and, um, what else? I'm in college right now. I decided to go back to school. Um, yeah, so that's been really exciting. I decided to go back to school and it started with sustainable, um, foods and farm systems, and then it turned into liberal arts and studies, and now it's turning into something even more interesting. But um, to add to some of my life experiences, I've also worked as a contractor, a tiling contractor in Boston, and I owned my own tiling business. And I was much loved by people who really needed me to come in and save the day sometimes. And um, I really love the work. It's very physical, concrete marble, but it's also very artistic. And there are a lot of amazing techniques that I learned by doing that and working with um, just a lot of different kinds of people, architects, designers, builders, and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, I would say like, I, I really felt that I should be a, a part of the Mass Housing Partnership. Um, maybe as, um, I, I'm also, I, I have children who have um, special challenges and I'm a little bit neurodivergent myself. So um, I have some experience in terms of like what people need in, the, in terms of that. So maybe I would, you know, have some input about design or, you know, so any features or, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I wanna know more about what's going on here. Um, and then- so, so I think that this is perfect for you to tune in at this point while your application's in process because you'll get a sense of the agenda and um, what might interest you or what we do. So anyway, I really wanna thank you for joining us. If I could just finish. I'm almost done. Um, oh, I, just okay. wanted to, I just wanted to say I've done a lot of, um, you know, I go to a lot of mass housing stuff. I, I do a lot of legislative writing. I do a lot of legislative hearings and stuff like that. So thank you. Thanks so much. Shauna Fischel. Hello. Thank you. Hi, hi, Carmen. Um, so I'm Shauna Fischel. Um, she or they pronouns. Um, uh, some of you might know that I ran for mayor last municipal election. I'm a resident and homeowner in Leeds. Um, and Carmen, was you um, reached out to me in Mar early March, I think, I th after I did not win the election, of course. Um, I applied for the housing partnership, especially because during my uh, different canvassing around the city, um, 
the various challenging challenges regarding housing in, in Northampton crystallized even further for me. Uh, I'm currently a social worker doing outreach uh, for vulnerable population, primarily in Holyoke and Chicopee, and the regional disparities, especially re regarding race, gender, class, and under intersectionalities of, of functional needs, um, is just something that I'm passionate and committed to addressing in whatever way it means that I can. Um, so Carmen, thank you for inviting uh, me to attend this meeting and to hear a little bit more about the agenda. I haven't heard anything about where the applications um, are right now, but I'm hearing that I'm not the only one in that boat. So I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit maybe about the application process and um, what sort of skills um, and expertise you're looking for to fill in the housing partnership. And I'm here today to listen. So thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Thanks for joining us. And Bridget Glocken, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Bridget Glocken. I, I lived in Northampton um, since 1978. And um, I, uh, I'm here because um, the League of Women Voters of the Northampton area, we're um, <coughs> We, uh, one of our missions is about meeting human needs, and uh, we've been volunteers with providing meals at the shelter when it was on Center Street, and um, now with Mana. And um, that's one thing that we do. Well, we decided to do uh, a, sometimes we do studies because part of our mission is to uh, acquaint the voters and the citizens about issues that we support to improve. Uh, things in the community. So we're doing a study about houselessness and affordable housing. And our chapter includes, um, doesn't include Amherst, but includes Springfield and Holyoke. So we have members on our subcommittee on our study subcommittee uh, from Springfield and from Holyoke. So we're studying the issue at this time. And um, we started studying it uh, back at the CPA in the fall. Um, when the CPA made some new types of grants regarding uh, housing issues in Northampton. So I came to the partnership. I'm a person from the league that's gonna come to the partnership. So another person may come. So we're just working on the issue. So we're learning about what you all are doing, kind of what your plans are and all that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, all right, so we need to move on with the agenda. Uh, we have the March meeting minutes. I hope people read them and I would like a motion to, uh, to entertain a motion to approve or make corrections. Ace. Uh, correction, uh, Councilor Mayori's name is spelled incorrectly. Keith, did you hear that? Okay. Does that mean that these need to be brought back next month for, for, for approval? I don't believe so. If it's a minor correction. Uh, okay. Can... Any other questions or a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Do we, uh, do we need a voice vote, Keith? I, I can't quite remember. All right. So, um, Richard. Yes. Ace. Yes. Julio. Yes. Jen. Yes. Gordon. Yes. Um, Sarah. I'm saying. Okay. And I will say yes. And I think we've got everybody from the partnership there. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So the first agenda item after that is discuss the real estate transaction fee. Um, Ace, since we have some visitors, would you mind explaining just briefly a little bit about what this is and tell us where you're at, if anywhere, or what, what else is going on? Certainly. Um, so for context for our visitors, counselors Jarrett and Maori approached us about a proposed bill to implement a transfer fee tax in Northampton. This is something that has happened in other municipalities such as Somerville, 
where basically when there is a real estate transaction over a certain amount, uh, a fee is added and the proceeds from that fee go to affordable housing within the municipality uh, in some way. This is something we've been working on for a couple of months, um, but it fell on the back burner based on other things that we've been working on. Uh, the current status of it is um, I have been working with Councillor Jarrett to set up a meeting with uh, some of the folks who have implemented it uh, in other municipalities, as I mentioned. Uh, we're hoping to have a meeting about that this coming month in order to better discuss it and to answer questions that have come up from the partnership in the past. I have a record of some of these questions. Um, but I also want to uh, specifically say to um, Howard and, or, sorry, Sarah and Richard, uh, because you both were part of the subcommittee at the time, um, and to see if you wish to continue as part of the subcommittee, uh, as well as be part of the scheduling process, um, as well as open it up to others who may be interested in being part of this subcommittee. Um, as we did lose a member who was part of it previously. Comments, questions? Um, let me think about that a little bit. I'm, I'm, I want to be part of the subcommittee, but my time constraints might, I mean, have changed so. I'll, I'll email you and let you know. Uh, would it be okay to schedule in your absence and yeah. then let you know what time the meeting will be? Yeah, definitely. Great. Oh, yeah. I know that last time we were, we, we, it's still very much a um, ordinance that's still being shaped. It, we don't even have like an amount in mind triggering um, what the, when the, the fee would kick in, um, dollar amount sale transaction. We I just want to keep in mind that, you know, often it's like a, you know, million dollar sale is like Eastern Mass. That's pretty typical for Eastern Mass, but we should scale back thinking about Northampton. I can't recall last time I saw a sale of a residence that was for more than a million dollars in our area. Um, yeah, mine admittedly was half a million, but um, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, just keep it, you know, um, yeah. but that's what we're talking about. For those that are not familiar, it's, it's an amount. And then the question is, who pays it? Is it the seller? Is it the buyer? And I guess, you know, it probably something that could be negotiated in, it, in a real estate transaction. Um, so we, we have some things we had been talking about as part of the subcommittee, uh, which are written down and not in front of me at this moment. Yeah. Uh, but I, I appreciate I appreciate that. Richard? Yes, uh, I want to uh, sort of echo what Sarah said. I, I do have interest in this. Um, my time constraints have gotten exponentially greater, but I, I please schedule uh, based on what you need to do and keep me in the loop. And to the extent that I can support this, I want to work on this process to get it to its best place. Can do. I will keep you in the loop. Okay, Ace, thank you for your work on this. I want to um, kind of also add that this is a, a way that we, but not only we, but other places, and I know Boston has tried this without success so far, to look into um, generating more money for affordable housing. Now, I want to say um, that our next agenda item is to discuss future project and goals of the housing partnership. We have just, we have been sort of, this is, has been a work in progress for a while. I really feel like I need to mention here, and I'm not sure, Keith, if this is okay to discuss today because it's not on the agenda, but just this past week, the um, Greater Springfield Housing Study Part 2 came out, and um, it's a very incredibly comprehensive 110 page study of housing up and down the Pioneer Valley and the pretty intense needs of, um, uh, uh, you know, 20,000, you know, additional units that are either that are $1,000 or under for renters to sustain our communities in a, in a vibrant way. Um, I just feel like we can't 
um, leave that out, talking about goals of the housing partnership. Keith, is that all right for me to continue on this vein for just a moment? I mean, it's, if it's tied into our goals, I, I think it's reasonable, but you know, it is a dense document, but you know, if we were gonna kind of dissect the whole plan, that'd be, that'd be a substantially different, I think. Right, well, the way I wanted to tie it into, Ace, what you're saying, and the whole, um, uh, uh, you know, the effort to, you know, increase money for affordable housing is that I was really, really struck by something in the summary, in the executive summary, um, which is as follows. 20,000 housing units are possible with the federal and state money flowing into this region currently. And I thought, really? And I, I, I wonder if other people have comments about that or um, any other thoughts. Sarah? Um, I think, were they referring to um, funds that specifically be due to COVID, like that there were additional funds? I'm not sure. I think that they were in general, that. yes, because they said flowing into this region at this time. So I think that was part of it. Yeah. Ace? Regarding improving housing, uh, while that is certainly an evocative summary, uh, I do want to address the realities of building new housing takes time. Uh, and while the money is there, the, you know, it's, it's the old thing, the best time to start was five years ago, second best time to start is now. Uh, so I agree about, you know, the urgency and the need to push to it. And also that we won't necessarily see those <clears throat> results as uh, uh, fast as possible. And it's important to, you know, address that. Other comments about that? Are there other directions we want to go with this sort of ongoing kind of, um, hammering down of housing partnership projects and, and goals. Well, I'll just say as a general idea for this, this, this partnership, it's been ongoing is that we always are looking for ways to support housing production and um, both housing, formal affordable housing, but also just general housing. And of course, we, the challenges of, of construction is, as Ace was alluding to is just, it's so expensive to produce. Um, housing uh, without it in uh, the economies come with with higher volume and then that's also a challenge for Northampton because we just don't have the real estate for that as well. But we do that's what we do we, we often look to support the developers who come to us for funding or other other things that they need from us so that's an ongoing thing that we do. Julio. Richard was first. Richard? Uh, Richard, Richard, I think you're muted. Um, I think education and outreach within the community still is an important goal. And I think it's integral both to just sort of general mission and understanding and acceptance, but also just the goal of creation. If we uh, don't lay the groundwork for the broader community, understanding the need, and uh, then we are going to create a, an additional obstacle. I actually am going to add a nuance to this in new business, which I will discuss later. I just wanted to say that um, I am, am I? Yeah. That this again brings up the issue of um, our role in this process. You know, since we're not a housing trust, we don't create housing. We seem to be at the mercy of, as 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 Gordon mentioned, of supporting initiatives that other entities bring forward. And that's been a long-term frustration. I think it will continue to be one. But I do wonder, like, what else can we do? And I don't know what else we can do. In addition, as Richard mentioned, sort of 
continue to reiterate the problem, show the need, create awareness. Um, it would be great for to 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 have a more active role, knowing that that money is out there in understanding where is it and is it being utilized? Is it in fact being utilized now? so that we can see something five years from now, but I, we don't even know that, right? So, so that's an ongoing frustration. And I think, I think especially for the potential new members, I, I think that's something that they should know that we don't actually create housing. So we're not a housing trust. Mm -hmm. Ace? So related to that, um, one idea outside of uh, simply creating new housing is uh, proposing a possibly legislature or similar to, or bills, which is to say, um, to encourage the ability for uh, individuals to purchase and use housing and to discourage um, for example, uh, corporations from doing things uh, like, you know, knocking down existing housing and putting in more expensive housing. Um, there's been a bit of churn in Ward 3, where I'm at, of complaints about the number of new condos being built um, under the infill laws in Northampton. Uh, you know, infill laws were something that was specifically built to or specifically had to encourage uh, more housing to be built, but the results that are increasingly being seen is that it is uh, expensive high-end housing, and it's not actually helping the need for, you know, cheaper housing in, in the area. So I think looking at ways that we can incentivize that sort of thing, either through laws, either through grants, uh, various other things, I think is something we as a partnership should look into. And I caveat this by saying my plate is currently full. This is not something I can spearhead. I wanted to piggyback on, on that uh, and um, and just ask a question. I don't know if anyone has the answer. Uh, Ace reminded me of corporations buying up property. And I don't know if anyone has read the recent reports about uh, the alarming number at which corporations are buying up single family homes even, not just large properties in residential neighborhoods, in particular in communities of color and renting them, right? Which again, prevents people from the community from buying up those properties and either renting them or uh, living there themselves. I know that when I lived in Montague, this was an issue in Turner's Falls. Many of the larger properties are owned by entities in California and other places their investments of that type. And I just wondered how much of an issue that is in Northampton and whether even, and whether all those entities, the, the only ones I know seem to be local ones, but, but how, how much of a, an interest that are, is there from entities from outside the area in purchasing and developing in the area as an area in which real estate prices are skyrocketing. Anecdotally, I wonder if Penny knows anything about that. Anecdotally, my house was formerly owned by a uh, corp in uh, New York. So there so was at least happening. one. Yeah, that's good to know. I had no idea. I know the infill um, thing has gotten a lot of criticism because people are seeing prices that they didn't expect for the units that are being constructed. But I, I don't know this to be true or not, but I'm repeating what I've heard from people who are defending it. They're saying that because it's one unit or maybe two units, it actually reflects the real cost of construction these days. And it wasn't intended to be high market, but that is the reality of what the new construction brings. And again, it's, it speaks to the earlier point I made in order to do affordable housing. Now I'm not talking about formal affordable housing, like where it comes with subsidies, you need to do it in, in volume to bring the cost down. And that's just not what the infill was designed to do. 
And that's why you're seeing, and people will say, it's because that I have to recover what my costs are. And I'm not, it's not that I'm trying to gouge um, and take advantage of it, but it's, it's, it's reflect, housing costs have skyrocketed. Some of it has to do with the pandemic and supply issues as well. I think that, you know, we're talking about how big this issue is. It's way bigger than us. And I think that um, we've, and we're gonna go into this a little bit kind of hammered at, you know, some of these ways to um, increase funding and also to educate the community. Um, but sometimes it feels amorphous. And I think that's in a little, little bit what people are saying here. I do want to acknowledge that there was another person who joined us, P. Hunter. Um, anyway, welcome to you. Um, okay. There's a comment in the chat at this point from Gwen Nabad, can there be a housing trust and can there be a higher rate of low income units for the city of Northampton? We've been looking into housing trusts. Um, uh, you know, we need to find out more about them. Um, and low income housing, I mean, that is what all of this is geared towards. Any other comments? I mean, Northampton has a housing trust. It's just not, it's just not um, funded. There was one created many, many years ago. And you know, um, there's, there's, there is unit, there's, all, there's low income units or affordable, I should say affordable units coming online over the next few years. Um, not the least of which is the nursing home up on Bridge, uh, Bridge Road. Um, but there's been a lot of production in the last few years that, you know, not that we can take credit for it, but we definitely were there supporting Wayfinders and Valley CDC and their efforts to build some stuff downtown on Pleasant Street. <clears throat> and there's also the um, project Independent Housing Solutions that's coming in at the end of Franklin Street yep, right. to house currently homeless um, high High, um, high uses of emergency rooms, et cetera. And that'll provide 16 beds and the old Northampton nursing home will provide 60 apartments or 60 single units in independent housing solutions, 60 apartments in the um, prospect place, old Northampton nursing home. Well, maybe, I mean, let's segue into um, the next agenda, which is review of some of the things we've been doing and um, where we're at with those things. Does that look good? Uh, Shauna, do you wanna ask the question out loud? Sure, yeah. Um, and thank you for bringing up the, uh, the policy, the report on the housing. I just brought up the, um, the summary and obviously something that we all know that this is a regional issue um, and that Northampton we're holding a lot of the wealth, uh, hoarding wealth. Um, and I'm wondering how this housing partnership partners with other municipalities, either through other housing partners um, or through other means, if there is that connection or already established. Um, I would say in my in my tenure here, we haven't really partnered with other like committees in other towns. Uh, they might not be called the housing partnership, but yeah. similar similar committees. Um, I don't recall that. People on the committee longer recall that. Yes. Uh, yeah, Carmen. So yeah, we haven't formally, um, I think, done anything that would um, on paper, but. We have definitely worked with um, Amherst. They do have a formal housing trust and um, John Hornick has been really helpful. We've been just discussing with him um, one about housing, uh, the housing trust, because uh, they do have one. Um, and I believe it is funded by CPA. Um, so 
kind of in our discussion with that, we're kind of seeing how they operated. And that's been really helpful because they've, they've brought in a lot of, well, market rate and affordable housing uh, in our Amherst. Um, and then we've, not that it's uh, another town, but we have been uh, talking with the Northampton Housing Authority um, and that's uh, regarding the vouchers um, and trying to ascertain how we can get the, the vouchers in Northampton a little higher because right now people are on a waiting list and they get the voucher and they can't, it's not high enough. Um, so, um, but uh, those are still in process and, uh, but, uh, some of these, I think elsewhere in the country or maybe in the state, there's kind of regional housing trusts. Uh, those are more formalized, but um, we don't have that, no. Thank you. It's been a few years, but we, we, we have uh, from time to time done regional housing partnership meetings. We did it with Amherst, most certainly. I think East Hampton was the other one that we've met with and had joint meetings and, and, and to share across just to, as informational sessions, just to hear about what they're doing and learn from them and learn from each other. And I'll just echo what, what Keith was talking about. We have a subcommittee that's working on trying to uh, increase the um, uh, fair market rents for the Section 8 vouchers, which is a regional issue. And we've been working as a committee that's sort of gone quiet right now, but we were, we were working with folks from Amherst as well on this issue. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know for some of the clients that I work with in Holyoke, even if they have a voucher, they can't access housing, even in Holyoke. It's, I know, it's, it's, yeah. it's a regional problem. It's a regional <laughs> problem. And there's also a cross section, of course, with uh, transportation. And I'm wondering if there's any collaboration between the housing partnership and the transportation committee to make sure that affordable housing are near access to transportation and transportation and I don't know what's worse in the valley housing or transportation um, but both are pretty terrible <laughs> well I should say both need work <laughs> Julia I would add that over the years that I've been on the partnership we've been very attracted to the idea of a housing trust and I've met with East Hampton, that was also very interested in this idea. I don't think they've actually done one, but maybe they, they've, they've gone ahead and done it. But, uh, and certainly with Amherst, where we keep getting stuck is in, um, and, and we've met with the city about this as well on this committee just recently. Uh, but where we keep getting stuck is that is in the the amount of effort it takes to create and sustain a housing trust so the housing trust has to have certain kinds of positions to begin with you know with different kinds of expertises but also with with every housing trust we've talked with there's somebody who works 20 hours a week <laughs> pro bono in sustaining the housing trust and certainly a lot more than that in creating one so this is where this is this 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 is where we, you know, I, I think we could reactivate it and we could move ahead very smartly if there was or there were a group of people within this committee that were willing to move that ahead, at least to the next stage. Other comments, Gwen. So the reason I was wondering was because I recently went to a, um, well, it was must have been through mass housing. Um, I went to a meeting. It was a meeting with several different housing authorities or housing, you know, like like this group here, you know, housing partnerships that were that were talking with a gentleman who was running Nantucket Housing Authority. Um, he was in charge of the housing trust for that. And he's now in Lexington. And so they were talking and, and this other woman was from Wellfleet. So it was like a nice um, whole get together for them to share about how the, each other's housing trusts were going and um, to talk about how they had created it. And I, I think you're right, you know, it does take someone that will take time but at the same time, you know, it seemed like like wealthy, you know, um, you know, they they have, you know, some wealth there. And so what they do is they have like 
one one time a year they have a big event and it's their big fundraising event and you know something like that and so it's something that you know kind of puts it out there and just one more thing i was thinking was if we stopped calling it affordable housing and we started calling it sustainable housing people might be more amenable to that so i'm just it's just a thought that popped up like in terms of educating like other people out there it's actually more sustainable um to have people you know i don't know you know not buying up big hunks of land and instead just you know taking what they need so thanks thanks for your thoughts you know we were going to have um shelly goring from the boston housing trust come on this meeting and somehow we kind of lost the thread of that and i told her that i would get back to her but this conversation could potentially reinvigorate interest in really learning about this and pursuing this with a small group of people but they they thank thank you everybody for your comments I think because we have um, folks here who are interested in the housing partnership but not on yet, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if it would be premature to say who would like to uh, kind of reinvigorate this discussion. We could, I could get back in touch with Shelly Gorey. I could ask her to come next month um, to talk to us. Um, she could zoom in. That would be a start. And if people are in favor of that, I will be back in touch with them. Is anybody opposed to that idea? I think okay. if someone wants to make a motion, uh, that would be the proper, proper way to do it. Okay, a motion to invite she Shelly Goring. Keith? Yeah, I think that's... So okay. moved. Okay, second. Second, thank Ness. Okay. Can we just yeah, can we just have a wait for approval? Okay. Well, uh, I think you have discretion as chair to schedule whoever you want. I don't think you need a motion, yeah. but I'm certainly in favor of it. I think it's perhaps a little cumbersome to. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I think for this, by way of background, one of the reasons we've hesitated, it's been something we've talked about many, many for many years, actually, not just, mm -hmm. in, you know, should we go back to funding it? But what's always been the thing that's sort of given us pause is that we do have a funding mechanism to help build a housing, which is the CPA, CPA money. So that's often been, it's, and it's often been timely enough to support it. So it's kind of taken some of the urgency away from it, but doesn't mean that it wouldn't be a good thing to have a reserve held in a trust to fund projects down the road. Okay. Let's move on to updates because these these things that we're going to update on for our guests to hear um, are also part of our goals and things that we've been working on. All right. Um, so we have act actively worked in this committee on the um, legislation for brokers free fees rental brokers fees legislation. So that is, um, I'm sure all of you know um, that, you know, a renter comes in, many of the rental units in Northampton are bound up with um, rental agencies. The rental agencies charge 60 to 75% the first month's rent as their payment and they charge it to the tenant. We've been working on legislation to have that uh, not be allowed to be charged to the tenant. That has actually gone through city council and the housing partnership, it's been approved. However, Alex Jarrett and Rachel Mayor, the two city councilors who are instrumental in this, decided that they would get the, um, the community resources um, committee of the, of the um, city council involved in order to hear the other side from, from brokers and landlords who may have reservations about this, which I'm sure some of them will. That community resources meeting is going to be on Monday, April 25th at 5.30. Um, the Zoom link will be on the city website. Um, and it's really a listen and a listen and, you know, kind of see 
people's concerns. That's my understanding from Alex Jarrett. I've never been to one of these meetings, but I plan to attend. Um, so other comments about the rental fee? Ace? I want to be clear that the meeting is open to basically anyone who has a stake in this. So uh, it's also encouraged that people who do rent in Northampton or who would rent in Northampton but are currently priced out uh, also attend to share their perspectives on this bill. Mm -hmm. How are we going to get in touch with those people who might be priced out? How are we going to let them know? Uh, well, I have been doing some outreach on social media in that regard. I believe that Councillor Jarrett has sent it out on his ward mailing list. Um, if other people know of good places to put out that information, I think it would be beneficial. Um, so that's uh, what some of what's been done so far. And some of you may have seen the, the Gazette story. It was a front page story. What was, I can't remember when it was. Was it this week or last week? But anyway, it was mentioned in there. I think it was mentioned there's gonna be a community meeting about it. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, other comments about this? All right, so we're, we're sort of proud that we kind of, you know, took at least we're one can I can I ask a, a, a process question because I actually am going to plan to attend and I just want to be clear because we had this issue come up before whether whether I can speak as a member of the housing partnership and express my views that we as a committee are in favor of it or whether it should just be individuals we did formally vote in support on this bill yes. uh, as approved in the agenda so okay. I believe it's fine to speak on behalf of the housing partnership. Good. Okay, looks good. I agree. I think we were very unanimous in this. So I there. don't think there's any question here. Okay. And talking about that, this isn't written on the agenda, but I also want to say that um, you may have seen in the, um, I think it was in the newspaper article I sent around, but also in the 100 page study, um, housing part two that next Tuesday there's going to be a um, there's going to be sort of a, a, a summary given and Keith are you a part of that discussion next Tuesday April 12th no I'm not okay so it's going to be essentially uh, there's going to be sort of a synopsized training on it like for an hour or something next Tuesday, April 12th. I think the head of Wayfinders is going to be there and a number of other people. So I'm hoping to glean some um, other information from that that, um, you know, that may kind of steer our thinking. Any other comments about that before I move on? Okay. Um, Short-term rental impact fees usage for affordable housing. Keith, I think this is something you wanted to talk about. Oh uh, yeah, so um, I think uh, previously um, as a partnership, just kind of want to know <clears throat> where our funds are being used. So um, there's an order I went to city council last week uh, and it's $50,000 in the short-term rental impact fees. So that's the Airbnb money. Um, and that, and that, so that passed to the council, but it will refer to the finance committee. Um, this is going to be um, used for uh, for affordable housing. I I'm blanking on the uh, the actual uh, project right now, um, but um, you know I think because of the pandemic, uh, you know fifty thousand that's from two two plus years. Um, so you know it's. It's cool we have to use it, um, and uh, but the you know now that things are pick, kind of picking up, we're hoping that kind of will accrue a little better. And you know the beauty of this is it's not tied to um, like CPA is this very you know rigid kind of structure, and CDBG is even a little more rigid in the rules and stuff, so it's a little more flexible. Um, and I'm going to look at my notes again and see what this project is for, but uh, it's for affordable housing. So. so essentially we know that 
the um, short-term rental fee fund hasn't brought in as much money as, as it might have otherwise had we not had a pandemic because a lot of Airbnbs were closed. But this $60,000 is going to a particular project that you'll let us know what it was when you, um, when you figure that out, right? Yeah, I'm going to look at my, my, my email right now. Okay. Um, all right. So, I mean, we essentially come to the last agenda item, which is other business not anticipated. I'm also wanting to use this time a little bit to make sure that we all shape what we want to see for next month. So one thing I'm hearing is that uh, we want to invite Shelly Boring to talk about the Boston Housing Trust. I was also actually wondering, um, after you said what you did, Gwen, about, you know, kind of the Lexington person as well. Um, I don't, not necessarily at the same time, but, but this is a whole subject area that is fairly intensive. So we'll start with Shelly Goring and we'll go from there and kind of re-look at that, at that, at, at the possibilities there. What are other comments about other business, other questions, issues, et cetera? Ashana. Can you please just um, review a little bit the process of uh, new membership and where we stand? If you know anything to share. <laughs> I know that um, it goes through the mayor's office and then there's a um, phone interview with her briefly and then it goes to the city council I can't totally remember and it just varies in terms of length and I would really encourage people who haven't heard to get in touch with the mayor's office yourself call or email court Klein and um, or the mayor directly and see to see where that stands during the pandemic it just took forever to get people like ace and Sarah and Hannah Schaefer onto the um, onto the committee. It was just absurd. But when I applied, it took like six weeks, and then I was on. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a little opaque, opaquer than it needs to be. Yeah. I I would like to add that uh, we do have a number of vacancies, so there is no competition. It's not a competitive sport getting onto the housing <laughs> partnership, and Carmen, that there are two hands up. Okay, and could you help me? Yes, it's Richard and Bev. Okay, Richard, you're next. Okay, thank you all. I hope you'll indulge me for a little bit because I don't really know the answer to the question that I'm asking, but I think it's important to spend a little time on it. Um, and it has to do with the issue of infill. And this has obviously been something that has received a lot of community concern. So I think that any housing issue that has community concern is important for us to make sure that we examine thoroughly and understand where we stand on it and how we articulate, you know, both the board's position and how people might feel about it. And so, you know, I've been thinking about this. I've actually served on the housing partnership for over 30 years. And right from the get-go, we've had some underlying paradigms, and I think these are accurate. Anybody can sort of check my work. One is that, you know, we need more housing. There's a chronic shortage, and that we need more housing all across various income spectrums, and that we certainly have a high degree of interest of those uh, capital A affordables that are captured and, and can't be lost or, or at least captured for some long period of time, but that we also like little A affordable and there's things that we want to do for that. And we also recognize that, you know, it's a market force in a lot of ways. The more supply there is, uh, the more that provides opportunities and that there's a certain amount that we can't control because it's market driven. But one of the things right from the beginning was the notion that infill housing has a very special place 
because that's where the infrastructure in the community already exists. It's where the transportation exists, the water, the sewer, and that it also avoids the kind of sprawl that gets in conflict with open space. So that's always been a really high premium. And we have, I believe, over decades been on record and worked with zoning people in, in many different incarnations to figure out ways to do accessory apartments and infill and change setbacks and all these things that we have advocated for strongly as a partnership. And I'm, you know, and I have been part of that for, for a long, long time. And people have been raising a question about what is the value of a character of a neighborhood? And, you know, clearly, this gets into very nuanced territory where you are essentially, certainly in, in my tenure on this board, I've been to many uh, neighborhood meetings that I would consider uh, heavily NIMBY oriented. And, um, you know, you know, you sort of look at that and categorize it and place it in one place. But then again, if you take, you know, we have two examples right now that are very actively being discussed, the William Street neighborhoods and the Bay State areas, you know, they do have a character to them. And what is, especially in situations where we've got uh, not necessarily trophy homes being put up, but whatever the current market rate housing that's being, you know, able to be built up, we have neighborhood residents who are saying, you know, the regulations that we have in place are inconsistent with something we value and treasure, which is the character of our neighborhood. And I feel like, I don't have an answer to this, but I feel like it's a question that I would like to have a little bit more clarity about, you know, is there a nuanced approach? And you know, you can dance around the edges and say you can't have a corporation, you know, or some other non-person, but, you know, lots of, you know, there are seniors who buy their homes and living trusts and, you know, all these kinds of, you know, it gets a little quirky to, to talk about who or what income level, but, you know, what place, I guess the question, the broader question is a question of balance and understanding, um, do we still buy the paradigm that a greater housing supply everywhere is desirable? And what is the value of, um, you know, because we all believe, and I think it's clear that the, the institutions who can put captured affordable housing in, that's great. You know, that, that really addresses a need, but that's only a small piece. So, where does the balance between neighborhood and infill and whatever? So I'm 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 searching for help. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Um, Bev, did you have your hand up and wanted to say something? Yeah, it's a little bit outdated at this point, but I uh, did want to um, share that I had served. Uh, maybe seven years ago on the Cambridge Housing Trust. And it was a really great experience. And it's a very active, um, vibrant organization that not only has some dedicated resources, but also has a lot to say pretty much about how all um, affordable housing resources are targeted and whether they are or are not consistent with the city uh, strategy around affordable housing. I, I don't know if there is a city strategy around affordable housing. I'd be, love to um, understand if there's a document that, that speaks to that. But in any event, if you decide you want to meet with other housing trusts, I could certainly um, connect the dots with Cambridge. And I think there's a lot of synergy in terms of some of the both problems and politics between mm. the two communities. 
Um, the other thing I wanted to say, and I, I've lost track of who asked the question about what the process appears to be for new uh, appointees. My, my process has been that I, I uh, put my hand up last year, and then of course the election meant nobody was going to respond until they caught their breaths, but I did have a conversation with the mayor, and I did have a conversation with Marianne Labarge, who is the city councilor uh, from the ward in which I live. Um, and she said that at least she may implied that uh, uh, several uh, appointees were going to be going before the city council this week, I believe she needed some information from me by Monday. So um, if those steps haven't happened, then I agree you should knock on the door and say, hey, <laughs> if, yeah. if they have happened, it might be moving faster than, 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 than you think. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for those comments. It sounds like you have some um, good uh, th things to add here. Thank you. Now, on my iPad, I sometimes have trouble just seeing people who have raised their hand. Does anybody else raise their hand and feel free to help me out here? I have my hand up. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. Um, I just wanted to um, second what Richard said um, about infill and just talking more about zoning and, and, and our stand, you know, our take on, on those issues, because I think it's very important. And a lot of, you know, there are these um, voices that, that tend to be pretty loud at the neighborhood associations about particular projects that, that people don't like. Um, and you know, those aren't necessarily the only voices, but they they tend to be the ones that get heard sometimes. And um, yeah, I, I mean, infill is is figuring out how to do infill well is is part of the sustainable Northampton plan, like to have um, more more sustainable housing and um, it's, not have so much sprawl that takes a lot of infrastructure that's very expensive for the city to um to pay for the roads and all of the infrastructure for houses that are out in the um you know out in the country and um you know there's there's just a lot there so i'm glad you brought it up richard i don't really it's a it's a big topic but it's you know there's a lot about so there have been you know zoning this is um a topic that's you know there's a lot happening around so so i'm i just i agree with you <laughs> it's, a, it's a good topic to explore more and i believe that there's now a movement by some community members i think spearheaded in ward three with the williams street um uh proposed project that's been approved by the planning department i believe um to really push the city to re-examine the infill zoning and um, what that is leading to. There was a call on Northampton Neighbors, which is an over 55, you know, listserv group um, that I noticed. And I think, you know, that's a good idea. It'll open up the conversation and it will have people tuning in. And um, uh, yeah, we shall see when, when when those citizens speak. Are there other comments about this? Gwen has a hand. Gwen. Hi. So I, I went for the um, I went for a meeting to the neighborhood meeting where they're putting in the affordable housing at 737 Bridge Street. Um, mm -hmm. I, I live in, in public housing at Hampshire Heights. And so I knew that was happening and I wanted to go see what was going on. And I, I did actually, I was one of those people that commented about the infill and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, anyway, it was, it was interesting. You know, I think, I think most all of the neighbors are open to something being done with that building. Um, it's been there for 10 years and, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, they just kind of put forth, the main thing was the traffic thing. That was the big thing right there. And a couple of people brought up noise. Um, but noise for the people who live there. And I do think that's something that should be considered in the design of it and stuff. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that I went and 
that's what I, yeah. I saw. Yeah. Thank you, Gwen. Jen, did you have your hand up? No? Okay. So, so my iPad is acting, acting up. Anybody else though? Keith? Yeah, Carmen, I just, uh, in my notes, I put it in chat, but the $50,000 is um, appropriated to go to the old nursing home for the acquisition. So some of that CPA funding, uh, $50,000, I believe it's basically going to empty out the account. Um, it's going to go for that. And Valley CBC, who uh, you all know, they did the lumber yard. Um, so a uh, really good partner. And um, that's it. I think that the acquisition has happened because I believe I saw it in, in, in the transactions last week in the Gazette. So, yeah. Okay, does anybody else have their hand up? Who oh, I cannot see. Okay, so I just want to return to next month. So we're talking about, again, um, devoting some energy to housing trust. Um, I'm gonna contact Shelly Goring. Um, other thoughts about either next month or what other kinds of things that we want to pursue in the near term. Ace. Somewhat obvious, but checking in on process of the transfer fee and the broker's fee uh, and anything that's further needed uh, motions for those. Mm -hmm. We'll have that community uh, resources meeting by then. Okay. Any other kind of business at all? Julio, did you have your hand up? You are muted. I'm, I'm, yeah, I know. I, I am reminded that uh, for a few times uh, we've talked about, uh, Edgar was not here today, so I don't really want to speak on his behalf, but it, it seemed that he was eager, willing and eager to talk about the housing authority, the committee he sits on. It's been a few years, a couple of years now, and he's never really reported back to the housing partnership. Uh, and uh, I think that we should make room for that and sort of have that conversation with him ahead of time so that he knows it's coming up. Julio, I think we did have a- Did I miss that meeting? <laughs> in a meeting that you missed, but I think oh, that- well. <laughs> But I do think that it's an important to have that conversation with him again, especially if we get some new members, it'd be really useful for them to hear uh, about his position on the housing authority and um, for us to also um, review that and to support him in doing that too. Yeah. I've never actually gone to look at a recording, Keith. Are they all archived that I can look at for missing meetings I, me I missed? All right, mm -hmm. thanks. They're all available on the website. Yeah, I can see the link uh, if you go to the Housing Partnership page. You should say a link to. Okay, no, it's okay. Don't stuff. bother. I'll find it. Thanks. Yeah, it is on there though. Yeah. Okay. Big issues. Small actions. Plans and thoughts for the future. Possible new members. Sometimes our meeting ends early, which is like, I don't know. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's amazing. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Any second? Second. If people are too fast, like it takes me a while to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith, do we need to have a voice, uh, individual vote on this or not? No, okay. So let me just say before we adjourn, thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate all of your comments for the folks who are here checking us out or just listening to see what we do. Um, there's a lot to do and um, we hope to see you next month.